The development of the diaphragm. Now this is a picture which is actually showing the different components which lead to the formation of diaphragm. And if we just orient to this image, this is the anterior aspect and this is the posterior aspect. So towards the anterior aspect, this whole portion of the diaphragm, it is contributed by this pink colored structure which is given the term as septum transversum. It is a septum transversum and as we come behind, so on this side as well as on this side, this area it is formed by a pleuroperitoneal membrane. So these are the two major components which are forming the diaphragm. Then we are having a slight contribution from this lateral side over here, this one. A slight contribution coming from this lateral side. This is the mesoderm of lateral body wall, which is contributing from the lateral aspect. Then there is a contribution from this posterior side, this tail like contribution. This is given the term as the mesentery of esophagus. So all these structures together, they are contributing in the development of the diaphragm. So regarding the development of diaphragm, over here we say mainly it develops from septum transversum and another structure is pleuroperitoneal membrane. These are the two major structures leading to the formation of the diaphragm and apart from this we have lateral body wall mesoderm, the lateral body wall mesoderm and dorsal mesentery of esophagus. So these are the structures leading to the formation of diaphragm. Apart from this we say the muscles of the diaphragm, they are specifically derived from cervical somites, which are also termed as myotomes. So all these structures which we have mentioned over here, they all are leading to the formation of the diaphragm. The muscles of the diaphragm, they arise from this cervical somites or the, or the myotomes. Congenital diaphragmatic hernia. the congenital diaphragmatic hernia. This is a congenital condition which is associated with the defective development of the diaphragm. And the most common congenital diaphragmatic hernia is boctalic hernia. It is a boctalic diaphragmatic hernia. So we say that it is the most common it is a most common congenital diaphragmatic hernia which we see and it is basically due to the defect in the formation of the diaphragm and that is specifically the pleuroperitoneal membrane. So there will be defect in formation of pleuroperitoneal membrane. This pleuroperitoneal membrane it basically separates the pleural cavities above and the peritoneal cavities below. So this defect in the formation is there and it is most commonly seen towards the posterior lateral side. It is most commonly seen on the posterior lateral side and we say it is more common on left side. So because it is more commonly seen on the posterior lateral side, so the Bogdelex diaphragmatic hernia, this is also termed as the posterior lateral hernia. So this is one of the important types of congenital diaphragmatic hernia. Another is Morgagni's hernia. So the second type is Morgagni congenital diaphragmatic hernia, which is, which is also seen over here and we say it is more common on right side. It is more commonly seen on the right side. And this Morgagni hernia, it is basically to, uh, towards the anterior side where the sinus of Morgagni is present or the laryngeal space is present. 
So these are the two types of the congenital diaphragmatic hernia in which the most important over here is this boctalix hernia.